So a lot of you guys might be wondering, what do you do with all your spare time? I eat meat, lots of it. Pork ribs are what's on the menu for the day. Let's get this going. Smoking ribs can be pretty involved, so be sure and check out the description below for all the recipes, supplies, and instructions. So I got about a half stack of briquettes. Yeah, this is the, the Weber, Weber starting cube. I really like these because uh, they don't put off as much junk as the fluid does and they're not as messy and they work really well. So there we go, we're gonna get that good and hot, get the coals going. So here is all my rub already made. I'll throw a link in, in the description below for this rub here. I really like it. I make it in bulk and save it in jars so that I don't have to make it every single time. Uh, but yeah, we've got uh, my buddy Jaren Standage coming over for dinner tonight, so we're gonna make him some ribs. All right, so these are the ribs that I get. Hormel uh, from Winco, cheap as you can get. I think they're just as good as everywhere else. I'm not picky when it comes to meat. I just want it to be smoked up really good, have a nice bark on the outside, and I want it to fall apart. Uh, I'll go ahead and take the packaging off of it and get it all prepped. If you do have a local butcher, I would go ahead and go with them. They are more expensive from there, but there's nothing like buying local meat from a local shop. We just buy from Winco because we're at that phase in life where we can't afford to buy really nice cuts of meat. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and sprinkle this all over, give it a good rub and pat down. All right, some people really like taking this uh, layer of it's like skin off the back. I like leaving it because it kind of holds the ribs together a little bit better. And I like my ribs to just fall apart. So I'm gonna go ahead and just season that up a little bit too. And the seasoning will melt because it has high sugar content in it. That's what you want. You want it to melt. You want your ribs to be kind of moist because that's what's gonna help your ribs receive the smoke. Uh, if you have dry ribs, they're not gonna receive as much smoke. All right, that's looking good. When they start turning uh, white and red all over top, then you know that they're ready to go. Uh, all I've got is a Weber kettle. Uh, with the adjustable vent down below. That's all you need for smoking, really. I am a minimalist when it comes to smoking. I don't want to have a whole bunch of supplies and uh, bells and whistles. It, this is just the bare minimum to get a really good smoke on a couple of ribs or a little small brisket or even a pork butt or pork shoulder, whatever you want to call it. I like to call it a pork butt. Okay, those are looking good. They're starting to turn white. We're getting really close. Let's go talk about wood. Here's my wood stash. Now, I recommend using wood that is local wood. So for us, alder is a really common thing. I like it, it's a mild smoke. Uh, you, I have a buddy who has a hardwood flooring business and he has tons of uh, maple and cherry wood. And, uh, this is cherry wood, this is maple. Uh, and he, he gives it to me in this in this form, just leftover flooring pieces. It's unfinished. You wanna make sure that there's no finish on it. It's just dry cured. Uh, if you go to any flooring store, chances are they're gonna have a whole bunch of leftover stuff like this that they might just give you just to get rid of it. So here we go. We're gonna go ahead and throw these down in the slow and sears. There we go. Okay, we're gonna let the grill heat up and then we're gonna throw the wood chips on right before we throw the ribs on. Barbecue grill is good and warmed up. Couple pieces on that side. Couple pieces on that side. This white oak. All right. All right, here's my barbecue stash. I've got all my coal bags and um, yeah, all my goodies are in here. So this here is what I use for my ribs. It keeps them upright so I can fit them all on the, on the rack. Throw it in here just like that. All right, we got these ribs heading out. One of these days I'm gonna make a nice barbecue setup where I got a place to set things. All right, let's throw these bad boys on there. All right, there we go. So those are gonna smoke. I'm gonna go wash my hands. Okay, so I've got the top vent set just like so. Just a little bit of a gap on all four so that smoke will come up. But really what I'm looking for is smoke to be coming through there and all the way around the ring on this lid. You want the vents to be uh, not, not wide open, um, you know, but not completely closed. We want them to be just a little bit closed. 
So we try that right there. Now, the idea is you want your grill, your smoke at this point, to be uh, about 200. So the internal temperature of your barbecue grill needs to be about 220 to 250 is where I like to have it. Um, but if it gets up to 300, you're gonna be fine because it's just gonna be on there for a little bit receiving smoke for like an hour and a half. Okay, so here is my dual probe setup. This is what I really highly recommend when you're starting off uh, smoking or if you have a new barbecue grill and you don't know uh, what temperatures things are gonna be at. And I'll show you how, how this thing works. So you got two probes. This one goes into your meat because it's got the sharp pointy end. This one goes on your barbecue grill to see what the internal temperature of your barbecue is. Okay, this is the wireless part. This is what you clip onto your belt. This stays with the barbecue. That smoke is rolling nice. Pretty much all you do is turn it on. You've got a selection here. You can you can either have it be Fahrenheit or you can have it be Celsius. You can just help hold down on that button and it switches it for you. So here's a meat probe. I like to put it right here. Not up against a bone if possible. Stick that down in there. For the barbecue grill. Stick that right about there. Okay, so uh, if you remember, I got this little can right here. A little metal can up with water. Whatever you do, don't use a glass jar for your water reservoir inside a barbecue grill or a smoker. It'll, it'll burst. A little metal can is the only way to go. All right, so the barbecue is at 230. Internal temperature of the food is 75. So that's about right. That's where we're going to keep it for a while. All right, so they have been on for about an hour and temperature rose up to 288 and that's all right. The internal temperature is at 174. So they're about ready to, so okay, I'll explain this. When the temperature of the meat gets up to 180 to 200, it starts to break down and get really nice and tender. And so that's kind of the range that you're shooting for. But I don't want these to dry out, so I'm gonna go ahead and wrap these in tin foil. They've been on for a little over an hour, uh, so they've got a lot of good tasty smoke on them, and uh, we'll wrap these things up and throw them back on. A lot of guys will use butcher paper. I'm okay with butcher paper, I think it works fine. I like tin foil, I think it holds heat in better. go we're, we're gonna leave that on there cooking till the temperature gets up to 180 to 210 is where you want to be that's the range you want to be in you want to leave it there for about an hour no more than an hour in fact you can take it off at 45 minutes all right i think these bad boys are done okay so here we are we got a brown sugar and barbecue sauce glaze over these so we're gonna throw them on the barbecue grill let them get good and sticky all right got a good sticky glaze on them now they are ready to come off and be eaten <laughs> all right mm. oh. got the perfect amount of smoke to it mm. all right dude give those a try take, oh, a, big old, take a big old bite of those bad boys mm. no get that Messy. That is so good. Yeah? You like it? All right, huh? Thanks for stopping in and barbecuing ribs with me, guys. Catch you next time on Nateness TV. Just my life.